But think about it on the positive side. You've just germinated all those weed seeds that were in your soil. If you can kill all those weeds. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Monday, June 26th here in South Georgia. We're finally back to some normal weather. The everyday rain seems to have stopped, at least for now. So in today's video, I wanna show you how we've been working to kinda of get our gardens back in decent shape after all the rain we've gotten. And after that, we're gonna do a little tomato harvest. Now I know for some of you, depending on where you live, it may be dry as a bone where you are right now but at some point you're probably going to get an abnormal amount of rainfall and hopefully this information will be helpful whenever that does happen but anyways here over the last week and a half i don't know how much rain we got exactly but it was a lot several rain gauges full if i had to take a wild guess at it i would say it was somewhere between 12 and 15 inches so when you get that much rain over a short amount of time, it can cause a lot of problems for your backyard garden. One, it's gonna make the weeds explode and start thriving. Two, it's gonna cause some soil compaction, especially if those rains were pretty heavy. Three, it can kind of generate or cause the onset of a lot of plant diseases because there's so much leaf moisture out there. This is especially the case if you live somewhere where it's hot and humid like we do. And then fourth, it can cause some of the fruits to start to explode. All that water makes them enlarge too fast and they'll kind of burst on you. Now I don't really know how it hasn't happened because usually when we get that much rain we'll get an explosion of mildew on pumpkins and squash but these still look pretty good. And then sometimes it just helps to be lucky and that's what happened with these watermelons here. We got these planted late which means we didn't really have any fruits out here that were nearing maturity so nothing really damaged out here. So it appears we dodged a couple bullets there with the disease issues and the fruit bursting issues, but we have definitely dealt with those first two I mentioned. We had an explosion of weeds and we had some serious soil compaction. And those are the two things I wanna talk about today and what you can do to help out your garden after you get a lot of rain. So let's start with number one, the weeds. One of the most frequently asked questions we get is how do you not have hardly any weeds in your garden? And my answer to that question is always that we look at things from the perspective of the weed seed bank, not necessarily the weeds themselves. Now we can get a bad weed explosion and have an overgrown weed problem just as fast as the next person. If you remember those red onions I had over there a few months ago, we had a pretty bad problem right there. But our goal is to minimize the amount of weed seeds that we have in our soil and not let weeds thrive once they germinate. So we do that through frequent shallow cultivation. We do that through cover cropping when we're not using the plot. We do a lot of tarps in the fall and winter to force weed seeds to germinate and then they die. So when you get a bunch of rain, it's gonna cause every weed seed you have in the first couple inches of your garden soil to germinate. And yeah, you're probably gonna have a mess, but think about it on the positive side. You've just germinated all those weed seeds that were in your soil. If you can kill all those weeds before they go to seed, you can drastically reduce your weed seed bank. So let's use this no-till plot here as an example. So going into the weekend, we had quite the weedy mess out here in this plot, and we got some more heavy rain Friday night, which made it even worse. Now Saturday, it was still too wet between these rows to run the wheel hoe and do a light cultivation, but it wasn't too wet to get in here, run another line of string, prop up these pepper plants, hand pull some weeds, which were easy to pull because the soil was nice and soft and wet, and also take my little hand hoe and do some very delicate weeding around those plants. So Saturday was all about getting these in row weeds taken care of while this part right here dried out a little more. 
and then yesterday Sunday I was able to get in here with the wheel hoe and lightly cultivate between the rows to get the rest of the weeds so we took what would normally be a problem and we actually made our garden plots better because all those weed seeds germinated with the rain but we killed them off it's been nice and hot out here lately those weeds we flipped up yesterday have all died and now the end result is that we have reduced our weed seed bank which is what we're always trying to do now let's look at another example here with our oldest no-till plot i haven't lightly cultivated this plot after the rain just because there's nothing growing in here i do plan on putting some field corn in here in the next few weeks so if we look closely here we can see a ton of little pigweed seedlings in this plot here but we can get out here and lightly cultivate this within the next few days kill those pigweed seedlings we will have drastically reduced our weed seed bank now the two key words there are shallow light cultivation you go in there with a tiller set on its deepest setting you're just stirring up more weed seeds but if you just do a light cultivation just to kill those weeds that have sprouted then you're really helping out your weed seed bank now the second thing we've dealt with is compaction. Now that term compaction is used in several different ways amongst the garden community. But what I mean by that is the rain basically beats down the soil, packs it down real hard. Sometimes you'll get some algal growth on top of it and it's almost like the soil can't breathe. And so what happens a lot of times after you get some heavy rains it compacts down that soil and the plants in that soil will look like they're struggling a little bit even though there's sufficient water in the soil but the easy solution is just to go in there and lightly cultivate that first inch or so of soil you can do it with a wheel hoe you can do it with a hand hoe a rake whatever you want to use but if you'll just Kind of break up that crust a little bit on top there it'll make those plants pop again and everything will be happy now how soon you're able to do all this after a heavy rain is going to depend on your soil type and your soil structure now we have pretty sandy soils here and we've also added a lot of compost to these plots over the years so our soil drains pretty well and we can get back into them pretty quick even after some heavy rains some of you out there with harder clay soils you know better than i do if you get in those things when it's still too wet you end up making a mess and making a bunch of rocks in there by trying to cultivate when it's too wet so my general rule of thumb is to get in there when you can get in there without making a mess i was planning on wheel hoeing all these plots on saturday but they just weren't ready i knew i was going to make more of a mess than i was going to help anything so i waited another day they dried out a little bit now you don't want to wait till things dry out too much because then you'll get that kind of crust on top of the soil we can even get that in these sandy soils that can make things tough as well so you kind of just got to play it by ear wait till it gets just right and tackle that weed seed bank while it's still a little moist but not too wet and don't think about it from the aspect of man i'm out here having to pull all these weeds think about how you're reducing the weed seed bank so now that we've explained how we got everything back in relatively decent shape it's time to harvest some tomatoes here especially from these two rows of determinant our roadster and our red snapper tomatoes before i start picking any of these i wanted to show you kind of a stark contrast between shaded tomato plants in the afternoon and non-shaded plants so the shade from those pine trees doesn't shade this entire row kind of stops about right there you can see those plants there looking a good bit rougher than these plants over here which still look phenomenal now i won't know for sure until we start picking all these but i don't think we're going to get buckets and buckets of tomatoes today we got a few nice looking ones on there still a ton of green tomatoes on both of these rows here so still a lot of production to come we're going to go through here and pick everything that's turning and we'll see if we can tell any big differences between the fruits on these two varieties all right so we got those two rows picked there we got them in dogs buckets because everybody knows they taste better that way here's our red snapper harvest here's our roadster harvest as expected not quite a boatload yet still a lot of production to go on these 
to get about twice as many roadsters as we did red snappers that is expected as well roadster in my trials is always a little bit earlier than red snapper so if we grab a couple of the better looking fruits from each bucket we can do a little comparison here these are the red snappers you can see pretty good sized tomatoes not ripe yet but they will be in a few days sitting inside here's our roadsters beautiful tomatoes but obviously not as big as these red snappers so one of the main reasons i like red snapper so much is because of the plant vigor it is the most vigorous determinate tomato variety i have found down here and we've tested a lot of them over the years it's not the most productive determinate variety i've ever grown but the plants are the most hardy and the most vigorous for me down here we grew a variety last year called grand marshall that was really really productive but the plants look terrible and personally i'd rather have tomato plants that look good as opposed to plants that look terrible it's kind of depressing coming out here seeing some sorry looking tomato plants even if they are loaded so i like red snapper because i know the plants are always going to be nice and green and vigorous for me i also like the larger tomatoes here they're just pretty fits nice on a piece of bread nothing wrong with those tomatoes right there we'll can these and these are delicious too but i like the plant vigor and i like the fruit size on the red snapper so although we may get more tomatoes from that row of roadsters where the plants look kind of pitiful and the tomatoes aren't as big red snapper remains number one in my book for those two reasons now i haven't made up my mind yet whether i'm going to keep growing roadster or not certainly not a bad variety it's a variety we can always count on to give us lots of tomatoes for canning purposes but i've got that dixie red variety growing over there in the raised bed garden and it has some beautiful looking fruits on it they're not ripe yet i'll show you those next time we're working over there but if dixie red impresses me a little more than roaster we may grow a whole row of dixie red next year in the in ground garden as opposed to roadster and then the last thing I wanted to do today was to sample one of these indeterminate varieties that we haven't tried yet. I've got one of these Turkey Creek Maters right here with my name on it. But it's not quite ripe yet. I probably should pull it, but I've just been thinking we'll all let it ripen on the plant right there. Hopefully we get to try that one pretty soon. I think the ones we need to try today that we haven't tried yet would be this big wisconsin mater that david sent us got a few right there that looks like they'd be worthy of a taste test now i don't know exactly what color these are supposed to be when they're completely ripe it feels soft enough but it's not necessarily all the way red what we're going to do here before we try it we're going to swirl it around in our dog's bucket a little bit get some of that good dog's ether and chi on it now should be ready all right so hopefully david's watching i know he's been waiting to see if i could grow one of these with my lackluster indeterminate growing skills sure does look pretty there that gum mm. that's really good it's really good almost tastes kind of like the turkey creek a little bit got some nice acidity to it mm. real meaty too look at there ain't much gel and seeds inside there it's pretty much all mater mm. i'd have to say that well, there's a winner and i got one on the plant there that's going to be a monster if nothing happens to it so i hope you enjoyed the video today don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website lazydogfarm.com and if you want to know more about this whole weed seed bank thing check out this video right here one we did on our corn plot behind me a few months ago talking about our tarping and cover crop strategy and how that really reduced our weed pressure and made growing that corn a lot easier and a lot less effort so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm